Hello, and welcome back to Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and today I'm going to be taking you through another game from the World Rapid Championship. Uh, of course, the World Rapid Championship this year was won by the one and only Magnus Carlsen. And today I wanted to walk you through one of his victories with Black against Lavon Aronian. Now, uh, this was a very interesting game uh, with some new ideas in the opening and some unfortunate blunders as well. So why don't we just take a look and see what happens. Uh, Levon started with d4. We saw knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, just a queen's gambit decline structure, knight c3, and now c5. Uh, and this is the semi tirage And this structure with c4, d4, c5, and d5 uh, is a very, it's one full of tension. And this tension actually shouldn't last too, too long in the opening. Uh, one specific characteristic of this structure is that you generally end up in what's called an isolated queen's pawn position. And we'll very quickly see this happen after c takes d5 and e takes d5. So immediately, white has the option to capture on c5, and you would now see the isolated queen's pawn position. This queen's pawn on d5 has no friends to help it out, so it's isolated. And these positions can be very, very double-edged. Uh, white has a weakness to attack because no pawns can defend the d5 pawn. Meanwhile, black would have an edge in space. The central space can be used to activate his pieces a little bit more freely, and that's generally the character of, of these positions from the semi tirage In this case, though, uh, first of all, white shouldn't capture right away. He would rather wait for black to waste some time with this bishop before taking on c5, or wait for black to commit to developing some other pieces. So instead, white plays useful moves, g3. We see knight c6 hitting the d-pawn, bishop g2. And now c takes d4. Black is the one who caves first, and we still get this isolated queen's pawn position. And now we see bishop c5, which is not the main move. Bishop e7 is a bit more common, but this is by no means anything new. And here, white has exclusively played the move knight b3, keeping this d-pawn isolated, gaining some time on this bishop, and uh, historically, the game has gone pretty naturally. Black moves the bishop forward, white gets castled, develops his pieces, this bishop can come to e3, this rook maybe maneuvers its way to d2, and puts more pressure along the d-file. Uh, this actually, though, has not been uh, you know, too successful for white. Uh, black usually manages to equalize. Of course, the isolated queen spawn position, while double-edged, is still usually balanced in positions like these. So it's not like white has, has a crushing advantage. So in this game, Aronian came up with a new idea, which has not been played, of playing knight takes c6. And I call this a new idea. Uh, the idea of taking the knight on c6 in the IQP, isolated queen pawns positions, uh, has been uh, known. And you transfer into what's called a hanging pawn structure. And so this pawn on c6 supports the pawn on d5 for the moment, but actually both of these pawns can become weak if black isn't careful. Uh, we'll just get through some more developing moves first, though. Castles, castles. And now white plays the move queen c2, which is deceptively annoying. Uh, generally, we don't see queen c2 as a very threatening move, but in this case, it really is eyeing uh, this c6 pawn. And if black plays a nonchalant move, let's say h6, stopping a pin, already white would be completely crushing with a move like knight a4 and queen takes c6 coming on the board. You see how these pawns can very, very quickly become weak. So, of course, Magnus has made a tougher stuff than that. He plays bishop b6, removing his bishop from the threat of knight a4. White actually continues with knight a4 anyways, uh, keeping an eye on this c5 square. This is a great way to play against this structure. If you can prevent this pawn from coming to c5, it's going to be very, very awkward for the black pieces to get active. Uh, for example, this bishop would love to come here, play c5, play d4, trade off white's bishop on the long diagonal, and then really not have any problems at all with his position. In this case, though, he has to choose the slightly more awkward bishop d7. This bishop isn't totally happy on d7, and likely black's going to have to waste some more time uh, moving this piece again. Uh, white continues with b3, aiming to develop his bishop on the other long diagonal. We see rook e8, putting some pressure on, the, on black's half-open file. Bishop b2, very natural. Uh, black throws in this move h5, 
threatening to, to create some, uh, some trouble on the king's side. White responds with a natural h4. And now we see knight e4. Once again, keeping an eye on this c5 square, you definitely don't want to allow a knight to land here. Uh, of course, knight c5 wouldn't be such a good move here right away because of the weakness of this e-pawn. If not for this e-pawn weakness, knight c5 is a very common idea to really pin down the weakness here on, uh, on c6. But okay, we see h4, knight e4, now e3, puts this pawn on the square where it's defended, kind of stunts this bishop a little bit. You see rook c8, and now white changes the structure once again with knight takes b6 and pawn takes b6. And here, white actually plays a very, very clever move. And so if you at home think you can find a way to win a pawn, uh, I dare you to try. Uh, you can pause the video here and see if you can come up with the move that Levon played to actually get a slight, slight edge in this game. Okay, uh, with that in mind, hopefully you found it. It's queen d1. And this is a very strange looking move. Uh, it's taking advantage of the fact that black has pushed this pawn to h5. And you might think, well, well what's, what's the big deal? I can defend this pawn any number of ways, right? You know, I have bishop g4, I have knight f6, I have pawn g6. But all of these moves actually run into some trouble. And so, in fact, Magnus chooses just to jettison this pawn, just to throw it away in exchange for some central play. But let's take a look and see what's wrong with these moves. If g6, the fact is, you're weakening this diagonal just, just a bit too much. Something like queen d4 is going to be very, very awkward to deal with. You can't really stop this, this from coming through. You can play a move f6, but now I'll simply take your bishop, or take your knight rather, with my bishop, and I'll be winning a pawn. So g6 is out. Knight f6 is a similar story. I'll still capture this knight, and then capture your pawn. And then bishop g4 is the compl complex one. Perhaps uh, Magnus could have gone for this. Uh, of course, the problem is f3 appears to be a fork. Of course, this isn't uh, quite so simple, though, because black is getting some counterplay by taking on g3. And for one, you could capture this rook on f1. But also, you can get some, some very dangerous play around the king by simply taking h4 with the queen. Uh, white has a lot of pieces hanging, and this would have been a very, very active way for Magnus to try to play. Instead of going for these complications, though, Magnus simply plays bishop f5, and after queen takes h5, picking up the pawn, queen d7, we see some threats on the light squares, and black is going to look to, to play in the center. So we see queen d1, uh, black continues with c5, uh, simply rook e1, bringing the rooks into the center, rook c d8 is black's choice, rook c1, bishop h3. Uh, as always, this bishop is a very important defender around the white king, and now Magnus simply looks to trade it off. Queen f3 is played, and Magnus chooses f6, which is a little bit abnormal, but uh, it's not completely wrong here. He just wants to stunt this bishop uh, on b2. We see bishop takes h3, queen takes h3, and now rook c d1. So this is the weak pawn in, in white's camp. So white, or in black's camp rather. So white is going to look to pile up on this pawn, and that's how he, he intends to, to win the game. He wants to open up the center, force things to be kind of traded off, and then he'll simply have an extra h pawn in any end game that uh, he, he goes into. Of course, chess is not always so simple, and Magnus Carlsen is kind of a master at, at keeping his, his cool, even when, uh, you know, the end games aren't favorable for him. So he simply, you know, keeps the tension, plays b5, and he's forcing white to make more moves. And that's, that's the nasty thing about playing Magnus. He, he gives you no easy decisions. And so white can do any number of things here. In the game, he chose to play queen g2, uh, offering up a trade. Magnus keeps pieces on the board. We see f3. This knight simply drops back to d6. And now white starts expanding on the king's side. And while this isn't such a bad idea, it is what led to Levon's eventual demise. Uh, by expanding on the king's side, you are you know, pushing your majority, making this h-pawn's presence kind of felt. You know, eventually you might play it in h6, and then this bishop can really shine. But the downside, of course, whenever you push your pawns forward, you're weakening your king. And this is the problem that Levon eventually ran into. Magnus chose this moment to push d4. 
course, e takes d4 might actually be met with the queen sacrifice. Queen takes e1, gaining two rooks for the queen, and really breaking open, open this king. That would be horrible for white. So instead we see queen c2. No, we don't see queen c2. We see queen d2, uh, keeping the tension here for just a moment, and defending the rook. So this is now a threat. Mm -hmm. We see queen d5. And the idea is that now there's already some pressure on this f3 pawn. And uh, you can start to see the air around the white king. And you can start to see how, how this game can, can kind of go wrong for white. It's a very dangerous position. Uh, Levon uh, still had it under control, though. He plays e takes d4. And now black could, in theory, go ahead and capture this f pawn. But white's planning to play the simple queen g2, uh, trying to evict this queen. And then d takes c5. And this would be uh, totally fine for white, actually. And we're getting closer to the type of endgame that, that white is really looking for. Right now, this past c pawn is going to be very, very dangerous on black can, unless black can pick it up uh, immediately. And so Magnus chose not to go in for this line. Uh, instead of playing queen takes f3 and allowing this pawn to get to the dangerous c5 square, Magnus plays c4. Uh, uh, an idea uh, just to keep this pawn on d4 keep this bishop locked out of the game for the moment, and try and you know, hamper the white pieces. And this is where everything kind of went wrong for Aronian. And it's actually a very, very strange mistake that he made. Uh, it's very, very natural now. You know, before, you were tactically defending your f3 pawn because you had the threat of taking on c5. Black has removed this threat, so it's very natural now. You should just defend your pawn. Just play a move, king f2, even king g2, although it's a bit less natural. I like king f2, just defending f3. And now you can go about you know, your business in your own time. Black might be regaining a pawn over on the queen's side, but uh, white, sh or white should stand better in this endgame due to this uh, very nice bishop, and white is still a pawn, a pawn to the good. You can imagine a move like d5 coming later, and like I said, h5, h6 coming through to, to shake loose black's king's side. But instead of that, instead of the very natural king f2 or king g2, we see the move bishop a3. And this is just very, very strange. It simply loses this pawn on f3. Uh, white still has this move queen g2 to, to keep things a little bit under control. But now, with f3 gone, black's problems are, are really, really nowhere to be found. The game continued. Rook takes e1, rook takes e1, queen c3. Uh, the rook is attacked, comes back to d1. And now we see b4 from Magnus, and this bishop has uh, actually seen much better days. Queen e3 check was Magnus's choice. Uh, Levon chose to block this piece off with queen, H, queen f2. After queen h3, queen g2, we see a quick repetition. And now this queen comes to e4. Uh, once again, attacking this pawn. So queen g2, we see again. And now c3. And you can really feel the, the, uh, the power of black's position here. While material is still in white's favor, it is five pawns to four. This c3 pawn is worth more than any pawn on the board for, for white. So bishop c1 uh, is what white played. Perhaps white should have taken the opportunity to trade the queens, although the end game does also look quite bad. This pawn comes up to c2 now. And after rook f1, White is picking up yet another pawn, and now, or black is picking up yet another pawn, and now with material even, this c pawn will, will tell the story of this game. We see some more checks, gaining some time, and now g5 is white's choice, queen e5 check, king h1, and now Magnus played rook d1, which is totally winning, black is totally winning here, but perhaps it would have been a bit easier to play the very, very simple rook d4 just picking up this, this h pawn. There's no good way to defend this pawn. If you play, uh, let's see, there, there's nothing you really can play. If, if you try to take c2, you're simply going to get checkmated after, uh, after something like this. The rook will come to h4 and hit this king on h1, and there's nothing really to be done. So you can't take c2. You can't really defend this pawn any other way. I'll simply just pick it up like this. And that, that would kind of spell the end of the game. Instead, though, we see rook d1. Uh, and now, white plays this move, g6. 
and you're starting to feel some, some pressure around the black king as well. Levon's starting to, to try and find some chances. Knight d8 was Magnus's choice. And now after queen f3, uh, Magnus once again makes an awkward decision. He plays rook takes f1. And this one I, I really do think is, is quite a bad choice. Uh, I would have much preferred to see the move rook d4 or even queen d4. Once again, eyeing this weakness on h4, and this would really be, be the end of the game for, uh, for Levant, ha had Magnus chosen to do something like this instead. But after rook f1, things start to get a little complicated. We see queen e4 check, king g2, or queen g2. Uh, black does take this pawn, but after some more checks, it's a little unclear how we're going to get rid of this bishop on c1, with just this knight stuck all the way back on d8. And the fact is, while black should... Uh, should be better in this endgame, he's by no means winning anymore. It's actually quite difficult. Levon plays very well. He plays queen e4, king f8, queen takes b4 check, picking up a pawn, king comes to e8. Of course, you don't want to stay in this corner where this pawn is going to allow uh, many checkmating ideas for white. Queen b5 check, king e7, queen c5 check, king e6. The king wants to come up the board to uh, the queen where it can hopefully hide behind it to uh, avoid this perpetual. We see queen c8 check, king e5. We actually see bishop b2 now from white. King e4. And now the, the last move of the game was played. Uh, and I'll bet you guys will, will never guess the move that Levon Aronian played because it, it's quite a shocker. Um, here, this position is actually a draw with best play. Uh, it's kind of funny, actually. Um, there is no definite perpetual for white, but what white can do is make use of the fact that this knight is so far out of play and that these two pieces together are enough to stop this pawn from getting to c1. So what white can do is while black is organizing his pieces, white can simply start pushing this a pawn. And the king can come forward, but now if the king steps too far forward, it's going to be a simple perpetual like, like so. So instead, black has to try, you know, tricky things, start giving checks. But every time uh, black wastes the tempo, we're going to push this a pawn further down the board, and eventually, uh, black will be unable to uh, to create any any threats. And while this is very very difficult to find over the board, it's a lot better than the try that Levon Aronian had, which was to play queen b7 check. Uh, now, uh, I'll let you at home uh, try and figure out, see if you can find some way to refute this move. I'll give you a hint. It's a free queen. And this is the unfortunate end to Levon Aronian's game uh, against Magnus Carlsen, which is kind of a shame. It was a very well-played game by, by both sides, uh, up until just a, a couple lapses in judgment by Levon Aronian. And of course, you can't afford to do that against Magnus Carlsen. He will take advantage. He did take advantage. And that is how he won this game. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining me once again for Game Review. Uh, my name is Caleb Denby, and I'll see you in the next one.